You're listening to the OCD Stories podcast, hosted by me, Stuart Ralph. The OCD Stories is a podcast dedicated to raising awareness and understanding around obsessive compulsive symptoms. I do this through interviewing inspired therapists, psychologists, and people who have experienced OCD. Welcome to the OCD Stories. And welcome to episode 365. And in this one, I chat with Niels Thiessen about his OCD story. Now bear with me, I still have a bit of a sore throat, as you can probably hear. Um, We discuss Neil's OCD story, in particular OCD themes such as hit and run OCD, contamination OCD with HIV fears, harm OCD, relationship OCD and paedophile themed OCD. We discuss what helped him, seeing 9 to 10 psychologists and psychiatrists who didn't identify OCD. Neil's is a medical doctor, so we discuss how he is helping his patients with OCD now finding a therapist that could help him, and much, much more. And thank you to NoCD for supporting the podcast. NoCD offers effective and convenient therapy available in the US and outside the US. To find out more about NoCD, their therapy plans, if they currently take your insurance, or to download their free app, head to go.treatmyocd.com forward slash the OCD stories, or the link will be in the episode description. So thank you to you guys, as always, for listening. I deeply appreciate it. Without further ado, here is Niels. Welcome to the show, Niels. Yeah, thank you. thanks for, for having me. Um, it's, it's a pleasure for me. Yeah, it's good to have you on. Um, so as you know, I'd love to hear your OCD story. So if you could share that now in as much or as little detail, that'd be good. All right. Um, so I thought I uh, might be helpful to, to introduce myself um, um, really, really quick. So my name is Niels. I'm, I'm 45 years old, living in Germany, and I'm um, um, a medical doctor by, um, by training. And I've been uh, specialized on, um, on anesthesia. So I've been working in that field for 14, 14 years, I guess. Uh, mainly mainly dealing with in- intensive care patients um emergency um patients and, and uh, patients who who actually needed surgery so i'm not really from the uh, psychiatric background if you can imagine mm. um and i'm now um training for becoming a general practitioner and this is something that i'm now doing for nearly 2 years yeah. And this is also the setting where I um, get in touch with patients that might as well be prone to uh, depression or maybe also OCD. And I uh, probably can say that I already, because of my experience, my own experience, actually diagnosed uh, quite a few of them and mm-hmm. um, made it possible to direct them into, yeah, um, yeah, su- successful treatment pathways, I hope, um, because that actually um, is something that I was looking for so for, for so many or have been looking for for so many years. And um, I actually got officially diagnosed myself with uh, OCD a couple of months ago in pretty much in March 2022. Mm. And um, I think what what happened in... 2000 by the end of 2021 is that i had to deal with um a situation where me and my partner moved house from uh, cologne to the countryside where the pandemic was actually yeah really influencing also my my daily my daily life my daily work um um, uh, we were really busy uh, vaccinating so many people and patients who were also desperately looking for uh, vaccinations and so forth. I was actually also vaccinating patients at home because otherwise I um, could have um, thrown the um, vaccine, uh, the, you know, the, um, the vaccination um, shots that I had left over into the, into the bin. So that way we decided to uh, not to do that and and actually vaccinate whoever actually um was capable of of receiving the the vaccination. So I ended up um also vaccinating people in my my um spare time, my my free time at home. Mm. 
And then we had um, somehow a, a conflict within my family also regarding to uh, getting vaccinated or, or, or not. And that also actually um, raised the pressure on, on my mental health um, situation, I guess. And by the end of end of, uh, of 2021, I, um, I was dealing with a new work situation because I, um, I used to, to, to work as an anesthetist, but I also found out for myself that having so many night shifts and um, weekend shifts wasn't really um, a helpful thing for me, for um, my, you know, my, my mental health issues. Mm. So I decided at one point of time, two years ago, that I wanted to become a general practitioner uh, without um, night shifts and weekend uh, weekend hours. But then, um, of course, I had to deal with um, a different, you know, different patients. Um, and most of the time, my patients back in uh, in the time when I was practicing in the hospital were 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 asleep, right? So, or really ill um, on on the intensive care unit. So, mm. I had to somehow start start again from from scratch, with, which was fine. But I'm just um, trying to explain that the you know the 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 overall uh, pressure situation for for myself just mm. raised massively without having having control over over it. And that led um, actually to a situation where in December 2021, I suddenly found myself driving in my car where I really got in trouble with uh, with um, two OCD topics that I've never actually um, met before. And that was relationship OCD and that was pedophile um, OCD. Mm -hmm. and, and that actually... Um, put me in a situation where I, I couldn't sleep anymore and where I became really depressed and then re referred myself into um, inpatient care myself. Mm. And yeah, that was that was actually the situation, the starting point. Uh, and back in the time, I didn't really know what, what OCD actually um, um, meant because although being a, a, you know, a medical doctor, I mean, I was trained Back in the time, the, the main topics were were contamination, um, OCD, and mm. of course checking things and stuff. But that was obviously not what I was um, was suffering uh, from. So I, I I mainly suffered from from mental um, compulsions and uh, intrusive thoughts that were constantly actually debating in in my head. Um, and actually also switch topics all the time. And yeah, and I always thought that this is kind of depression um, mainly. And yeah, I referred myself to the hospital and what happened there, they started tre treatment in, in, in terms of depression. And that was also a difficult situ situation, as you can imagine, being a medical professional in, in the field, um, you know, mm -hmm. becoming a patient in in uh, and and yeah, staying at the hospital is is not that easy to get used to. And I also had to really, um, yeah, I really had to try to to trust um, the therapists over there, and the, the doctors over there, uh, the nurses, and and they were actually actually great. Um, so I, I somehow managed, and I got on SSRIs, um, low dosage, low dosage though. And the thing is, and this is mainly the the reason why I would like to share this situation or the the story is that um, I really want to um, support anyone to not give up um, hope and and just keep on trying to find um, specialists in the field in order to to get maybe a second or third opinion on what you're you're you're, you're struggling with because during the therapy. In that hospital, I told my um, psychologist that I was suffering from intrusive thoughts that were bothering me um, all the time, and that I could couldn't find any um, any suitable, yeah, 
um, method to to actually tackle this. Mm. And what, what then happened is that, of course, um, I try to to cognitively uh, solve these debates and these discussions and these issues by reassuring myself in my head all the time. And I didn't back in the time. I didn't really know that this was actually, um, yeah, compulsive behavior. Behavior. Mm. And I also told the the psychiatrist who uh, put me on medication, and nobody um, reacted. So nobody in that clinic actually asked me whether I was maybe dealing with um, OCD symptoms. And um, that is why I actually um, yeah, I actually started to, to do my own research again after uh, leaving the, the, the clinic for um, um, after, I think, six weeks. And I started my own research again because I always had the feeling that this is not it. It's not all of it. So they, they really managed to, to, to stabilize me in a way that I would be able to function again. But I still had the impression that this, this is not the solution. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a really tough time. Um, because also, you know, um, as a medical doctor, you, you know all the procedures, you know quite a few uh, things, examinations that maybe need to be done, you know. So that, one, that was really extra difficult, I guess. But uh, luckily, I found a, um, a blog post on um, OCD Land, which is a homepage you might have heard of yeah, before. Had a, yeah. yeah. And Martin Niebuhr, um, big shout out to him yeah. here. Um, he's the, the one who created that um, that web page. And I found a blog post there uh, describing exactly the symptoms I was dealing with. So I just thought this is this is a blog post that I could have written instead of the one who actually put it on the on the home page. And it's exactly describing my my situation. And then it all started actually from there, because then I got in touch with more information in terms of the different um, OCD topics and OCD themes. And there's also a, a, a member part on that homepage where you can actually log into and find um, native speaking um, um, OCD sufferers, to put it like that. Um, and also specialists who can actually also moderate the the, um, the 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 private discussion on that on that web page, and that was also helpful for me. On on some, on some well, in some way, it also triggered me, but on the other hand, it uh, put me in a situation where I got to learn about more information, more literature to 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 read in order to to um, become my own specialist in terms of my my themes and what was happening inside and by by um dealing with that homepage i got um, i got i also got in touch with my therapist Burkhard Schubka schön who has also a, written a german um book on ocd which i would really recommend for the ones who struggle with reading ocd stuff in english mm. um and he's um, till now he's 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 my therapist and and doing a great job, great job, and I had to change a therapist again because the one I was referred to um, after my um, stay at the hospital was not really experienced and specialized on treating OCD, although she claimed that she was, uh, but she also she mm. always thanked me for my knowledge in terms of OCD and uh, treating patients with depression and um, also told me that this is a, a wonderful situation for her to to receive training while while somehow treating me and that was also kind of weird because I thought this is this is this can't be it yeah I'm mm. I need you to to actually guide me or maybe to to help me there but it's it's it doesn't make sense that um, that I train you in terms of OCD um, literature or um, 
what, what I found out about about it. And she also recommended the the OCD land uh, website to to her patients. So that was that was also a weird situation. She, she kept on telling me like, oh, another patient I um I have I rec- recommended OCD land to and uh, the OCD stories whatsoever, and they really appreciate it and they're super helpful for her. Um, but it wasn't in the end helpful for me. And that that's why I um, I change um, therapists, and um, I'm more than happy to to have the therapist I uh, currently work with. And also, when back in the time when I was really feeling bad, back in December, I um, I saw a colleague of mine, a psychiatrist I knew from uh, from the past. And I saw her in advance because I already sensed, like, you know, if there's a, a life event upcoming or happening, then I might be prone to to get depressed again. And I saw her back in the time when I re- was really suffering from from my my latest OCD themes. And she asked me actually, "What do you think would help you now in that situ- situation?" And again, I mean, if you're really down. Um, and and depressed, and you 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 ask a colleague to to help you out there, then you expect her to to take over control and recommend uh, treatment and maybe also medication whatsoever. But she actually didn't, and she was kind of annoyed because I um, I needed an uh, emergency appointment to 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 come to see her and. This is mainly why I'm really interesting to interested in spreading the word because this is something that's really, yeah, that's still reality in in Germany. I don't know how how this is like in in, yes, in the UK. But, the same, I believe. Yeah, and this is, I don't know. I don't know what to say. You know, it's 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 really hard, and I I can't understand why. Why this is this is happening? Because you know OCD and and depression that's so interconnected in my opinion, and it it should be um, it should be possible for for any psychologist or psychiatrist in the field to to distinguish between the the, the two, or at least um, no screening tests or questions assessments whatsoever in order to be able to to um to to figure this out and yeah no i i completely agree i think um especially when you went to that inpatient clinic or inpatient hospital they may not have been experts in ocd but they should have spotted but as soon as you said intrusive thoughts they sh- that something should have pinged and they should have inquired and to me ocd is is such a obvious diagnosis as soon as you start hearing certain words it sticks out from every other diagnosis there is. Um, so yeah, it is frustrating. Yeah. And and don't get me wrong, I'm 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 not blaming those colleagues. Um, this is also um uh, a systematic um well failure, you know, it's it's a, it's um it's the healthcare systems that have a lack of training or uh, funding whatsoever, feedback culture, um so uh, they they really did their best in order to stabilize me, but they also recon- recommended um, um, w- what's it called? Um, um, they, they didn't recommend the cognitive therapy for me, but instead recommended what's the other one again in English? I don't know the the one that's more related to Sigmund Freud's um, oh that- psychoanalysis I, exactly yeah that's the one. So that's what they uh, they actually recommended, and I refused to do that yeah. uh, because I had the feeling that this is this is not it, yeah? and, and it's really getting worse. And you know, I'm the f- first time I really suffered from OCD, as far as I can remember, that that actually started you know, back in the '90s when I was a teenager, where HIV was really, really, um, really a topic the time when when freddie mercury unfortunately mm-hmm. died and um back in the time I, all, I i i can remember that i visited amsterdam together with my my parents and my family and i became anxious because i thought my touching bars and doorknobs whatever whatsoever 
I um, might have uh, might have infected me with um, HIV. Mm-hmm. So that was the first first time uh, that I can remember uh, really getting um, anxious in terms of weird things that were going on in my my head. And um, yeah, you know, in it's been a long road and it's been a long and winding road. There are days where I, I can't really believe that I made it until, until here, you know, having studied medicine, having uh, studied uh, um, a master's degree in medical education and um, yeah, really difficult. And I, I think I counted at least 10 psychiatrists or psychologists throughout the entire um, time that I somehow consulted in order to be able to, yeah, to talk about what was um, what was going on, and nobody actually asked me in terms of you know let me just ask you a few screening uh, questions in terms mm. of of OCD. Yeah, nobody, yeah. and um, also I had to change the medication myself after I got released. Is that, is that the correct uh, word for for? leaving the the hospital yeah released i guess discharge yeah. discharged i'm discharged. not sure what the correct yeah. terminology is but yeah so after after um i was home again i myself um increased the dosage of the um, ssri which i am um capable of doing so because i'm i'm physician right mm-hmm. but um i found this really um, horrifying to think of of uh, different people who are not able to to have that network um that many colleagues to talk to or even find the right literature in in the internet and doing their own research mm. yeah very good point uh yeah and I, I think you're right where you said you don't necessarily blame them because i think if i look at my own training as a therapist i loved my training i thought it was brilliant um but ocd i don't remember it coming up i want to say i don't remember it ever coming up which is quite shocking um and that might be because obviously at that point i already knew lots about ocd so i was fine but some of my peers you know they went through their whole training and it never really came up in any meaningful way so you've got these great therapists but who are just very unaware of what ocd is so and obviously they're probably going to understand the stereotypical view, what the media has traditionally said. Someone comes in with uh, pedophile worries or relationship worries or whatever it is, and they're not going to flag it as OCD, which is the the sad thing. But it comes back to, yeah, the training and institutions. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So when, uh, you know, you, you were driving in your car, I think you said, and you suddenly got hit by sort of relationship worries and pedophile-themed worries, Um what was it like experiencing it in that moment? Because it sounds like you hadn't experienced that before. Um, those topics were were quite new to me, and um, it resulted somehow in I would call it um, maybe also um, in 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 a panic attack, okay. because I was so, you know, I was I was so convinced that this was somehow true. And that, you know, I I have a partner, we're together for almost 19 years now. And I I do love my partner, I do love my home, I do love my cat and and my dog. So there's not that much I really need for being a happy person. But that was really, well, that was a really devastating thought for me. Yeah. Yeah. And and I started ruminating around that topic all the time, like you know, always checking whether um, whether we are still connected, how that feels, how it should feel, how it felt in the past, and you know, always uh, thinking around um, topics or you know, vacations in in order to to check out um, whether it's still like that or or whether something has changed. Um, and that that was really exhausting, really exhausting. And and in my opinion, the, the depression that comes along with it is is just a well, it's just a, a game over sign of my my brain, not 
being mm -hmm. able to process this this in, in entire um, dialogue in my head any, any longer and uh, yeah 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 thank you for sharing um so you've been working with your therapist now for a little while um how's that going and what what sort of stuff is he or she sort of getting you to do well um it's actually it's actually funny because um i also told him it's he i, I also told him that um when i suffered from the um anxiety to 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 have um infected myself with hiv um i can remember being um a very young medical doctor i think it was in my first year that i got in touch with blood blood that was actually contaminated with um with the virus with the mm -hmm. hiv virus and what i did back in the time i forced myself not to wash the blood um from my skin and i drove home and i knew all the time that i was driving home with uh, the the virus you know inside the car and even um on top of my skin i knew my skin was fine mm. so no no big scratches whatsoever so um when i when i got home and then i um somehow a couple hours later um went into the bathroom in in order to take a shower but i did this on purpose after um you know my entire anxiety actually also decreased and looking back mm. um this is somehow of um you know the the treatment for for um for ocd right exposure um yeah. and i didn't know it back in the time i just yeah. did it like that and i can also remember when i was a medical student that i at one day i was really afraid of burning down the house because i might have left on the the iron which i on the other hand also knew i did not do that but i was standing in the operating theater and um and i was working there i couldn't really leave so it was really hard to leave but i had to tell the nurse one of the nurses doing the procedure in order to to form my um the owner of the house in order to check on my room which the that which she then did and um, of course the iron was wasn't uh you know it wasn't turned on anymore so nothing to worry about and back in the time i also decided not to do that any any um any more in the future again yeah. which i did and it never bothered me again and i also did that with um hidden run ocd uh, because i also had experience in you know um getting anxious that i might have run over a person um and then i drove around the corner like three four times in order to recheck and i also had to say this uh, um to me um um loud um and clear that i did not hit have hit um, any any person while while driving and uh, i also managed to see that and and to acknowledge it and to stop it to stop that behavior but that was obvious behavior because i could actually you know also see it and recognize it and i also knew how to to actually deal with it but in terms of my my mental um compulsions i wasn't i wasn't really able to to see that and i wasn't really able to find a strategy to to cope with it yeah and what we then basically did is that we we talked about all all my experiences and then figured out how to yeah how to actually address these um yeah intrus intrusive thoughts by also making you know making fun of the the thoughts or giving them names and maybe uh, talking to those thoughts um i sometimes do that even in english because that helps me to externalize these thoughts a bit so i don't use my 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 german language mm. so when i walk my my dog in the in the vineyards where i'm living then you can actually also easily find me talking in english to somebody who's actually not there um which might be a, a, a bit funny for people who actually know me and uh, would see that 
So, but um, this has helped me a lot in order to to be able to process my my emotions that come along with it. And yeah, that's that's uh, that's some of the strategies. And of course, I need to um, I need to see patients and do the examinations that are necessary because I also um, you know I also struggled with uh, harm OCD where I had the feeling that you know I did a certain examination in order to harm somebody or I did the examination and actually harmed somebody by doing that or I did an examination that wasn't really necessary but I just wanted to do this because you know um so that's basically what we are we're talking about uh, not avoiding situations mm-hmm. and um and then um we we talk about the results I get out of that strategy. So that's basically what we are we are um, what we are doing now. We've been working together now for I think six or seven times. So we are really at the starting point, but what helps me a lot is to actually being able to um, to to phrase my inner dialogues and also to express my emotions and my my feelings and I really enjoy that there's somebody who is specialized in the field and and has an, an experience of dealing with OCD patients for over 30 years now. And um, this this was also a big relief for me because, you know, when being a medical doctor, you always tend to, to diagnose yourself and not talk to colleagues about it. And um, I at some time, at some point of time, I really needed somebody else who didn't know me in order to get a proper diagnosis because mm. my OCD was also messing up with me in terms of you're, you're making this up. Actually, you're running from uh, reality. Yeah. And you did all the bad stuff and all the bad things and you don't, you don't want to acknowledge it. So that also came into, um, into my mind. And that mm. was also a big relief to actually being able to talk about uh, my, my themes, my topics, and tell him what I was suff- um, suffering from, and to get a proper diagnosis from from him. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, I'm glad this therapist is is working out for you and is helping. Um, and it'd be great to see, you know, six months down the line how that's working for you. And um, I think I, I think I want to caveat. I love that you shared that when you were a junior doctor, when you were driving home and you had the infected blood on your on your arm. Um, very brave of you because even you telling me that made me anxious you know um <laughs> but yeah just to caveat anyone who's new to erp then no therapist is going to make you do an exposure like that that was of your own accord yeah no, no therapist is actually going to put you in harm's way i mean you knew the risks as a doctor you knew what mm-hmm. you were doing but obviously it was still triggering you and mm-hmm. um but yeah just to reassure anyone who's new to it um mm-hmm. brilliant so now you are uh, a GP, um, so you're getting people now that, that are presenting as having OCD, and what's that like for you, kind of helping those people? I I, I must admit, I I really love it because because of my own experience in terms of dealing with depression for uh, so many years, and uh, of course with dealing uh, with OCD for so many years, and. Mm having um, researched so many things about uh, the specific topics i am actually um, able of of screening patients um, that come to see us um, in terms of mental health issues and it's it's the four of us working in that office and also our our staff members already know that um, they at least book uh, like 30 minutes of time with me whenever p- um, uh, patients come to see us and and um, and talk about their 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 mental health uh, um, issues or um, have um, actually mental health issues. It's um, the area where we where we live and where I, I work is also close to the area where the the big flood has actually happened two years ago. Mm. So we also had to uh, to deal with lots of uh, people who really suffered from from that catastrophic um, um, 
um, situation there. And I really like being empathetic and, and, and listening to, to people's stories and, and trying to, to find a way to, to help them to, to get better by mainly listening. And also that's, um, sometimes, um, a line that I have to draw. And then this is also something that I talk to and um, tell the people that I'm not a trained psychiatrist. So I can't provide like th a psychotherapy. And that is also some, sometimes weird because in, in the city where we, we, we practice, um, there's quite a few people who, who rather come to see me in order to talk about their mental health issues rather than seeing um, a trained specialist in the field. Mm. And don't get me wrong, not trying to be arrogant here, um, but this is, um, this, is a, as, this is an issue in, in Germany. Yeah. And what I do is I, I try to, to get them diagnosed. And then um, every now and then, because finding psychiatrists and psychologists who have available spots for treatment is also very hard. We are talking about six months of uh, waiting for receiving an appointment. Mm -hmm. What I also do is um, to put them on medication and um, do all the, the laboratory tests that are necessary, ECG tests that are necessary. Um, I ask them, them to see me on a regular basis in order to, to check in um, how they're feeling, how they're doing. I have created um, a, a list with a bunch of resources in terms of psychoeducation, because that's also a main part, I think, and it's really important for them to to be able to to um, receive control again about their own, you know, their own health uh, situation, uh, so that they are able to actually then, um, yeah, um, help them um, themselves while waiting on a therapy um, on, a, on a slot for for getting getting therapy mm -hmm. and of course mm -hmm. i recommend ocd stories thank you um because i have to say that also helped me a lot driving to my work uh, back and forth listening to ocd stories and listening to all the the people sharing their their experiences listening to the experts looking up um different um different resources again after that so that was really helpful and really motivating um especially when you're really down and so yeah that's that's what i'm trying to do um also providing people with the 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 ocd land homepage literature and um and various links on the internet and then they can actually and then also they can come back again i do a lot of assessments like the y box assessment so this is actually what i'm trying to do yeah that's really good really good and really thorough and um yeah and you mentioned oc lee uh, yeah you mentioned ocd land again um they have a german speaking podcast as well so they also have a german speaking yeah. podcast yeah so just so to, sorry go on yeah yeah, and also in terms of depression, there is um, a very famous entertainer in Germany called Harald Schmidt, who is uh, performing a, a podcast on uh, depression together with um, this um, D specialist in the field in terms of uh, in depression research. It's um, Professor Hegel, and uh, they do an excellent uh, podcast there as well, interviewing also people who have suffered from depression, also um, quite a few um, famous people who actually open up on their on their podcast. So this is also something that I recommend to mm. to our um, patients. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Um, so, was there in your kind of recovery process, and I know you're still still in it, but was there a moment where something just clicked about OCD or clicked about um, the way you get past it? Yeah, yeah actually, um, very stupid um, um, how should I say um, very stupid comments like you are not your brain, you're not your thoughts mm. um, just 
Um, that just the fact that you have a kidney doesn't mean you are a kidney. Because that way I could, you know, I could see it differently. Because I always imagine that every thought that actually comes to my head must have a meaning. Because otherwise, I, why, why should I think about that topic? And why should I think about that topic so much? And in that, and, and and to that extent. So that was really really helpful. Yeah, really good point. Um, and then I guess you know many people listening are at different stages of, of their recovery. But just any like words of hope that you want to give them, maybe maybe words you would have wanted to have received. Well, just just uh, just stick with it. Never never give up. Uh, and and uh, trust your gut feeling. So if there's something not feeling right, try to 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 look for a second or even a third opinion. Yeah. And yeah. in in my case, I mean, I had to to account, um, contact like nine or ten people in the field, professionals, in order to and not to get an answer to to what I was suffering from. Right. Mm. So um, never, never give up and get in touch with people, open up with it um, about the topic. Uh, try to, to trust people. I also opened up about the topic in, um, in my working area. So all my colleagues know about it and also <laughs> our staff members know about it. And that also has helped in a way because they now also created awareness um, 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 around the, the, the topic. So one of our physicians actually also asked me today, like, hey, I had a patient two days ago and I asked um, 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 screening questions about um, OCD and around OCD. And I'm pretty sure that this is OCD. What would you now recommend to do? So it's it, it has um, an immense um, impact if you are um, comfortable at some point um, of time to to open up about your story, I guess. Really good point and, and good for you for being open. And as you say, that's going to help your colleagues now understand OCD better and destigmatize it, that it affects everyone. Um, yeah. So uh, you've got a, a billboard in Cologne, let's say. What mm -hmm. do you want written on that billboard? Well, I would say it's not your thoughts that creates this uh, this world. Um, I think the Buddhist saying about that is is kind of uh, different, right? It's um, it's your thoughts that creates um, your this world. Uh, so I would put it in the other way way around. It's not your thoughts that creates this world. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. Um, so if you, you know you could pick up the phone and call the twenty year old Niels, what do you tell him? Well, good question. There's nothing wrong with you. Um, just, just keep on going. Keep, keep on trying, and um, um, try to to get help as as much as you can. Yeah, good point. Uh, and then, lastly, is there anything else you wish you could have said or shared today? Well, um, I think I, I'm, um, I really wanted to mention Martin and Burkhardt here and, and thank them for their, their work uh, for the German community. And um, I also wanted to thank you um, about uh, uh, giving me the opportunity today to talk about my experience and about uh, what, yeah, big, big thank you about what you, what you do. Thank you. I appreciate it. It means a lot. Obviously, uh, Denkishin for sharing your story. <laughs> Peter um, <Schum. laughs> um, I, I appreciate it. Um, and I know it helped many. So thank you. Thank you for listening to this week's podcast. If you enjoy the OCD Stories podcast and would like to support us with a one-time tip slash donation, please go to theocdstories.com forward slash support.
All tips, no matter how large or small, are greatly appreciated. Please subscribe and rate the show wherever you listen to the podcast. And thank you to NoCD for supporting our work. If you want to find out more about NoCD, head to go.treatmyocd.com forward slash the OCD stories or click the link in the episode description. And quick disclaimer, guys, this podcast is not therapy. It is not a replacement for therapy. Please seek treatment from a trained professional. And until we speak, take care.